Heather, in the past you've had exhibitions about maps as work of art. Here you have works of art that are being considered maps. Tell us about how this exhibition came to be. Well, there's always been a community of artists in this country and abroad that work with maps as their jumping off place, their, their medium, or they're using the techniques to create their work. And over the years, we've seen their work here and there, and we really liked it. And so we finally decided to put together the exhibition. Uh, it's, this has been a long time coming, and we've been sort of collecting artists we'd like to invite. We invited them, and they all said yes, so here's the exhibition. And were these all works that are new for this exhibition, or were some of these existing works that you brought in? It's a little bit of both. Some of the artists did decide to create new pieces for the exhibition in the same style that they had been working in previously. And many of these things are the artists' favorites of their own work and things that they just wanted, hadn't shown for a while and wanted to be shown. I really want the viewer to look at the items and see what they see. They should really inform their opinion with what a map is because that is part of the process of the art is this is a map and this has certain cultural connotations for maps and I feel that many of the artists go forward from that into their work. It's a doorway if you will. I don't necessarily want people to be unsettled but I want them to really look and think, what does this mean as a, a meta concept? What does this mean for me? Jeff, you have two pieces in this current exhibit at the Ocean Map Library. Tell us about the one we're standing in front of now. It's actually six pieces here. These are all drawings from my sketchbook, and I've been carrying a leather notebook with the same size sketchbook for the last 30 years. And these are all drawings from one year where I was drawing roads that uh, all met in the middle. Well, one thing I've believed for a long time is one of the greatest American sculptures is the, uh, the freeway system, particularly in California. And when you see a stack of freeway overpasses racked up above each other and look at the sweeping curves, you realize it's incredible man-made invention and you have to be driving to look at it and I've driven through so many of them that uh, I just find them beautiful. Tell me about your second piece in the exhibit. My second piece is a screen print. It's, a, um, it's from a rubbing of a map that I dissected. I took a AAA road map and I cut away everything that wasn't a road and in order to store them I generally fold them back up. So if you've ever folded a road map imagine folding one that's been sliced to ribbons. And then I took that and I used a pencil and I made a rubbing of that and I turned that rubbing into a screen print. And so because it's tactile rather than visual, I ended up with a visual thing where you can see all the layers of the folded map. Well, these are visual and they carry a certain information that's divorced from the information that a map carries. And one thing you have to remember about maps is they have a lifespan. And maps get obsolete and you generally throw them away. And so by taking a map and using it in an art, you've changed its purpose from an information carrier to a different kind of information carrier. And in a sense, you've increased its lifespan. I want them to look at the beauty of the map. I mean, because it's, it's one of mankind's densest carriers of information. And a lot of them are beautifully done. When you're driving down a highway, a lot of times, all you're seeing is the road in front of you and a line of green trees on the side. And what a map does is it pushes you way up above that and lets you see everything that you can't see. And so a lot of my work takes you back and tries to get you to the beauty of the map itself. When you uh, look at it, normally look at a map, you sort of can see where you are, it's a specific place, uh, and it, you can, the map maker sort of helps you get to where you want to go. In this exhibition, in many of the works, 
the viewer is going to decide where they go and not the map maker. Uh, is, that, uh, is that part of the, the intention behind the work? I believe so. A number of these artists do have certain recognizable places on the map. For instance, these maps are of three East Coast cities. Uh, there are collage maps in here where if you get close enough you can read place names. Um, but it's also kind of pulling back from this is a thing that shows you where th things are in geography. And because it's on a flat piece of paper, that's an abstraction in and of itself. But I think they further that and take away a lot of the visual cues that you find on a map. But it's still recognizable as something that is or was a map. The um, work we looked at from Jeff Woodbury is very definitely something that is based on a shape, if you will, that is used in a map. Uh, we have, for instance, the gunpowder drawing of, uh, of, of river systems that is a map of a river system, but it is also very abstract. That work, the artist takes a piece of paper and draws on it with gunpowder. So they take grains of gunpowder and lay it down in lines as if, as you would with a pencil. Then he, it's sandwiched, the paper is sandwiched between two pieces of wood and there's a fuse in there and the artist lights the fuse and it burns away the gunpowder which marks the paper and if it's done right it doesn't consume the paper so it leaves, it leaves a black smoky mark on the paper um, and it actually looks like pencil that's been smudged. How long is the exhibit uh, in place for and where can people get more information? The exhibition is up until March 10th of 2018. There is information about it on our website, www.oshermaps.org. And it's on the, I believe it's on the visit tab for exhibitions.